Jiwa, stand by ya. Oke, ready, rolling. In 3, 2, 1. A very good morning. Good morning. morning. How are you guys doing? Fantastic, good. it's the last day. It's going off in a bang. What's the name of the boot? We are Planktonics. Basically, we came up with planktons because we are, we are starting off with very we small. We are the smallest of the smallest. The, of so we thought about days. something interesting to, 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 to just combine the name. So we started off with planktons. All right. Now, let's talk about your products. Sure thing. We have a variety of products. We have from bags, we have got booties, we've got rash guards, we've got all sorts of small little accessories. We are just trying to make a small name in our, for ourselves in this industry. Because we're very new, we're unsure of where to go next. But um, we've got dry bags, we've got rash guards, we've got all sorts of things. We've got lights, we've got we've, knives. We've got, yeah. we've got lights, we've got, we've got torches, we've got knives, yeah. We've got all sorts. Okay, I'm very, very pleased. A warm welcome from the organizer to you all. It's your you. first year on our platform, which much. is the 17th Malaysia International Dive Expo 2023. Yes, we want more and more entrepreneurs to bloom together in this industry yeah. so that we can emphasize, educate, and of course, bring up our tourism in Malaysia as well. I agree. And as well as conserve our planet. I think we're all in this together. Yeah. We're all in this together. We're all divers and we, we like to contribute to the business of this uh, big diving industry. Yep. And it's, we start small. Correct. And it's fun to be around all of our neighbours as well, you know. All, we are best surrounded by people who want to conserve the ocean to show that we have more to offer as well. Yeah. Good to hear. In the meanwhile, you know what to do. Take a walk. Look at it right at the main stage. We have Planktonics at B12 and B14. Check us out. We've got some good sales today. It's the final day. Clearance sales. We've got a lot of things. Don't forget, if you're looking for them, look for the names of Planktonics. Exactly. In the meanwhile, tell you who. Good morning. Hello, MIDA. How is everyone today? I hope everyone's doing well and alive. I hope you're enjoying MID. And since today is the last day, I hope you have a very fun day because MID doesn't last forever, of course. For those who don't know me, my name is Jazz. I am 14 years old and I am a coral propagator, Ocean Quest coral propagator and ocean, uh, open water scuba diver. So not that advanced, but it will do. <laughs> So my topic today is why young adults are needed in conservation. And as you all know, young uh, youths are quite important and they play a strong role in our community. And they make up a, a huge amount of percent in our world. Okay, so before I get on to my topic, I will tell you about my journey. As a 14 year old that has been into conservation since I was eight years old. So I started out by doing uh, beach cleanups in 2017. So I was still a pretty young kid carrying my plastic bag around, you know, picking up trash, following my mom. And I, as a kid, seeing all this plastic, it really took a toll on me. And I was like, why are people throwing this much plastic? Like, there's a trash bin. And like, as you can see, uh, we did a beach cleanup in one of the beaches. And after that, it was like squeaky clean. And we decided to take a swim on the beach. So as a kid, I was like, why are people throwing so much plastic on a beach? And I was like, I should do something. I want to make the beach pretty. I want to make it clean. So that's how I started off my journey in conservation. So over, over time, I decided to, when I decided to continue it, <laughs> hold on, okay. Before I was a diver, my mom and brother were already a diver, so I was usually left on the shore, left on the beach while my mom and brother descended into the water. So I was pretty sad that I couldn't join them and whenever my mom like come come off the sea and she'll show me like these kinds of pictures, I'm like, how small is that? How big is that? How pretty is it? So we would sit for hours on the table while my mom scrolled through the pictures before I was a diver. So I was like, oh, this is so cute. What fish is that? And it was pretty amazing for me since I wasn't a diver yet, but I was really, really in love with the sea. And when I did become a diver, funny story, uh, on the day I got certified, it was a heck of a day. It, it was like storm. It was name it. You can name it. 
uh, surge, choppy, big waves, thunderstorm, rain, zero visibility. I couldn't, I lost my buddy, I lost my instructor. I was under the, I was in the sea alone. And that was the day I got certified. So it was scary, but at least for me, I was really proud to say that I got certified in that condition. So I'm prepared for the worst when the weather turns, takes a turn for the worst. And I am now a diver. And this is when I got certified as a coral propagator. And I was really proud of that because corals play an important role in our ecosystem. It's the start, it's the core. So me being a coral propagator, I strongly urge you guys to also experience it. <laughs> uh, as a coral propagator, I have built tons of nurseries. I have helped build nurseries. And this is one of our projects in Dreamers Island, Sabah. And as you can see, we were uh, propagating corals right here, but we were also making tons of nurseries. So that was a heck of experience as well. And this is when me and my brother uh, went diving with my mom for the first time together. So it was an experience. And as you can see, the visibility is tough, but I've been through worse. So I guess you could say it's all right. <laughs> And over time, <laughs> that's a weird picture, but over time, me, uh, we sort of evolved. We have our own eco camp now, which will lead me to having more experiences. And I've met uh, ocean legends, as you say, like Clement Lee and Anwar Abdullah, <laughs> just a mention. They are ocean legends. So I guess I could say I'm pretty privileged privilege to meet them and I'm very proud that my mom gave me such a rare opportunity having me on stage in MIDE and letting me meet so many new people and giving me such an experience especially at my young age and that's pretty much it we have our, <laughs> our okay that's our eco camp is well it's better now but it's pretty rough okay and that, okay, this is our island. It's pretty small, but you can see. And that is where I participate in my projects and that is my playground. So it's a pretty short story for my journey. I didn't want to make it too long, but I, for my topic, why young adults are needed in conservation. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Continuing, sorry, that was a malfunction. Okay, why young adults are needing conservation? My journey was pretty short. I started, at, I started doing conservation since a very young age, and that's what I feel like is most important. If you're a parent here, I see one parent in the crowd there, I strongly urge you to like help your kid, bring your kid into conservation, because you know that you're not gonna be here for long, all right? And the young generations are gonna lead, lead our world. And it's very important that they start knowing these things, that they start caring about these things because there's no second planet. And I think we all know that. Even if we do find a second planet, we're just gonna continue repeating the same mistakes as we did. We're gonna be keep switching planets and I don't think that is necessary. So I strongly urge for any youths or kids to take part in conservation. It can be as little as doing beach cleanup. Stop using single use plastic. Uh, more on caring at least <laughs> instead of keep repeating the same mistakes so that's all i have and before i go and invite my brother on stage i have one last video that will sort of help me bring my message out to you more simply is if i say that okay i'm gonna play that and i hope you guys enjoy Dear future generations, I think I speak for the rest of us when I say, sorry. Sorry we left you with our mess of a planet. Sorry that we were too caught up in our own doings to do something. Sorry we listened to people who made excuses to do nothing. I hope you forgive us. We just didn't realize how special the earth was, like a marriage gone wrong. We didn't know what we had until it was gone. 
For example, I'm guessing you probably know it as the Amazon Desert, right? Well, believe it or not, it was once called the Amazon Rainforest, and there were billions of trees there, all of them gorgeous, and... Oh, you don't know much about trees, do you? Well, let me tell you, trees are amazing. I mean, we literally breathe the air they are creating. They clean up our pollution, our carbon. They store and purify water, give us medicine that cures our diseases, food that feeds us, which is why I'm so sorry to tell you that we burn them down, cut them down with brutal machines, horrific, at a rate of 40 football fields every minute. That's 50% of all the trees in the world gone in the last 100 years. Why? For this. And that wouldn't make me so sad if it weren't so many pictures of leaves on it. You know, when I was a child, I read how the Native Americans had such consideration for the planet that they felt responsible for how they left the land for the next seven generations. Which brings me great sorrow because most of us today don't even care about tomorrow. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry that we put profit above people, greed above need, the rule of gold above the golden rule. I'm sorry we use nature as a credit card with no spending limit, overdrafting animals to extinction, stealing your chance to ever see their uniqueness or become friends with them. Sorry we poison the ocean so much that you can't even swim in them. But most of all, I'm sorry about our mindset because we had the nerve to call this destruction progress. Hey, Fox News, if you don't think climate change is a threat, I dare you to interview the thousands of homeless people in Bangladesh. See, while, while you were in your penthouse nestled, their homes were literally washed away beneath their feet due to rising sea levels. And Sarah Palin, you said that you love the smell of fossil fuels. Well, I urge you to talk to the kids of Beijing who are forced to wear pollution masks just to go to school. See, you can ignore this, but the thing about truth is, it can be denied, not avoided. So I'm sorry, future generations. I'm sorry that our footprint became a sinkhole and not a garden. I'm sorry that we paid so much attention to ISIS and very little to how fast the ice is melting in the Arctic. I'm sorry we doomed you, and I'm sorry we couldn't find another planet in time to move to. I am... You know what? Cut the beat. I'm not sorry. This future, I do not accept it. Because an error does not become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We can redirect this. How? Let me suggest that if a farmer sees a tree that is unhealthy, they don't look at the branches to diagnose it, they look at the root. So like that farmer, we must look at the root and not to the branches of government, not to the politicians run by corporations. We are the root. We are the foundation. This generation, it is up to us to take care of this planet. It is our only home. We must globally warm our hearts and change the climate of our souls and realize that we are not apart from nature. We are a part of nature. And to to betray nature is to betray us. To save nature is to save us. Because whatever you're fighting for, racism or poverty, feminism, gay rights, or any type of equality, it won't matter in the least. Because if we don't all work together to save the environment, we will be equally extinct. So. I hope you got the message that I was willing to, hoping to give out. And we, I'm here to say that we are running out of time. And I hope you guys will come together as a team and spread more impact on saving our planet. Thank you. That's all from me. I'm now passing it over to my big brother. Hello. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, hello, MIT. Um, to those of you who don't know me, my name is Harvey, and I've, I'm a diver for seven years. 
I am Jasmine's big brother, right there. And I've been propagating corals for more than five years. And I've been a conservationist for almost my entire life. Ever since I was in elementary school, I've been like teaching kids, teaching my friends how to propagate coral and learn how to be a conservationist like me. You know, trying to make change for the world today and trying to do better for what's coming next. So, yes, I will be talking about uh, young adults in marine conservation and why it is important for them to get involved in these kind of things. So, like me and my sister, we had a pretty long journey. You know, we started off as like, we started off picking up trash from the beach and over time, that escalated into us doing conservation work that uh, focuses more on coral restoration, which is a huge step for us because it taught us a lot of things. Um, for instance, it taught us like, how to be more self-disciplined, how to manage our time properly, and how can we learn from other people who are doing the same things as us as well. And these qualities are actually important, especially when you're starting to develop from a very young age. And I think that um, young people like me and my sister, and not only us, but for everyone here as well, should get involved into conservation. So, the most important question you have to ask when you're doing conservation is, are you interested in it? You know, there's a saying that if you want to, if you start reaching out to everyone, you end up reaching no one. And that's an incredibly important thing you have to take note, because conservation is... There's a lot of conservation like all around the world. There's turtle conservation, there's reef conservation, there's seagrass conservation, and you guys have to focus more on a specific cause. And that is incredibly important if you're starting to do conservation. So you have to ask yourself, are you interested in these kind of things? Because if you don't ask, then you end up reaching no one and you will not make, you will not make an impact on the type of cause that you're trying to do. So... Yes, if you want to start doing conservation, please ask yourself this very important question because that's how I start off being, doing conservation. And um, I would also like to em put more emphasis on education because you can't... Ed ed conservation without education is pretty much useless and it's all close to being pointless as well. Why? Because think about this for a second. If you're a diver and if you want to start diving, how would you dive without knowing the basics of diving in the first place? And that's, that also applies to conservation as well. Because if you want to start doing conservation, if you don't have the basic knowledge of the thing you're trying to solve, then how exactly are you going to teach others as well? And how exactly are you going to bring others into conservation? This is incredibly important. Because knowledge, especially when it comes to youth, is incredibly important. They are hungry for knowledge and they are the ones who are going to absorb it and they are the ones who are going to carry over to the next generation. And this is important as well. Why? Because when I grew up from learning from people, when I first got into conservation, I didn't know any of these. I didn't know a thing about corals. I didn't know a thing about, you know, turtles, plastics. And these things came from people who know about them. So... Yeah, education is pretty much important when it comes to teaching young people. And I would also like to put more emphasis on this as well. So the future of conservation lies in the hands of those who are educated about, it, about its importance. So remember, education comes first, and without education, conservation is pretty much useless. So I would also like to put on put more emphasis on hands-on engagement when it comes to doing conservation. So, you know, kids, they like to play around with toys. They like to go out, you know, see the world, explore. Um, and this is pretty much important as well because hands-on engagement when it comes to education is very important. Remember, this is conservation, not school. We don't sit in class, read the textbook, listen to what the teacher has to say for a whole hour, and end up learning nothing. We have to actually and physically learn how to do them. Like these kids, for example, you know, this kid right here is the same age, age as me. I'm 17, and he's learning how to propagate corals by himself using his hands along with his brothers. So think about this for a second. Would you rather sit an hour just reading or would you spend an hour actually doing it? You would learn more than a kid sitting in class reading the textbook and learning something out of it. But that doesn't guarantee that you will absorb the knowledge 
compared to a person who's actually doing it. So you see, hands-on engagement is incredibly important. You know, you actively put yourself out there to learn these kind of things and absorb the knowledge and then get ad like critics from people who are actually training you on how to do these kind of things. So that's incredibly important as well. So these are just some of the pictures that put uh, examples of hands-on engagement. You know, when I started propagating corals along with my sister, we actually learned how to propagate them. So, you know, you take substrates from the sea, you know, we plant corals 100% organically, so we don't use any man-made structures because corals came from the sea and we have to use what's from the sea to cure them, to put them back in the sea. Basically, we don't, you can't call something conservation if you are in, including man-made things in it. You know, you, like how people usually plant corals, they usually take like metal racks and put them in the sea and call it conservation. That is not conservation. You have to put things that came from the ocean, things that came from where it came from, and put it back to where it came from. And that's incredibly important. So, um, there's a lot of importance when it comes to conservation. You know, young kids like me and my sister, we grew up learning and experiencing new things. All right, you know, compared to learning things in school, we actually go out and experience these things ourselves because experiences teach us more than words and words and textbooks that we learn in school. So, you know, fresh perspectives and innovative ideas from kids as well are, can actually be beneficial when it comes to conservation. Why? Because remember, when Kids learn how to do things, and when they experience something new, they tend, to, they tend to go wild on their ideas. And this is amazing because, you know, kids, they are hungry, hungry for knowledge, and they can think things out of the box. They can give us a fresh perspective and give us a bottom ground root on the things that we actually have to improve and look at from a different way on how to actually improve this kind of, to actually improve the cause that we're actually contributing in conservation. So... Yeah, fresh perspectives and innovative ideas. Uh, this is some of the pictures I took. So, future leadership and decision making. Conservation actually improves leadership and decision, decision making among young people because their futurism drives from positive change. You know, when they actually do something and actively learn how to uh, do conservation work, they get qualities like leadership, responsibility, like things that I've mentioned earlier, you know, as young adults grow into the future leaders, their decision-making and their ability to think critically is way out of the box compared to adults. Because why? They're able to think more faster compared to us. It's better to train a new generation than training a generation that is ex already existing in the present. And that's also another thing that's important. So, you know, another thing I would like to say about the benefits of marine conservation when it comes to young adults is the active involvement in conservation initiatives. Young people are able to go out there and experience these kind of things. They are not afraid of failure. They are not afraid of being criticized. They are not afraid of being like talked down to. And this is very important because, you know, teenagers like me, especially in Malaysia, they are afraid of going out there and putting themselves out of their comfort zone to make a change. So young people, especially like me and my sister, and other people out there will never be afraid to make a change and to take a step forward, to take, you know, a new direction, to form a new path. And, you know, that's all for me. And I would also like to put last quote from Marcus Aurelius, a former Roman emperor, the impediment of, the impediment of action leads to action. What stands in the way will always become the way. And that's all from me. Thank you. I'd like to bring Justin up the stage. Yeah, this is us. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening into our presentation. If you would guys like to <laughs> learn more, you can visit our booth. Yeah, we can, you can visit our booth. If you guys would like to talk more and learn more about us, remember to come visit at One Ocean Empire B46. Just right around the corner right there. And yeah, we can have a chat, you know, talk things out. You know, maybe you guys are interested in conservation as well. Who knows? All right, thank you guys. All right, Harvey. Jess, come here, Jess. Harvey. Right? It's all about 
saving the ocean. Exactly, right? Exactly. So in the meanwhile, today is the last day of the show. Right up to the evening, loads and loads of uh, great promotions are happening. We got the presenters on board. We got the grand lucky draw. So do not miss out on that. The more you shop, well, the chances are going to be much better. In the meanwhile, thumbs up for them, the young generation, to look after our planet and save the planet. And of course, let's go green. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amadi. Have a nice day.